It wasn't that long ago that the Polish heavies arrived and wheeled vehicles have just recently appeared. But we're already ready to show off something new. Hello everyone, my name is Yuri. I'm the lead balance designer. Hello, I'm Alexei Ilyin. I'm the World of Tanks product manager. Now let's talk about the new branch of the Swedish medium tanks. The first Swedish tanks were released in 2016 with two interesting branches. For autoloader fans, there were the heavies with well-protected turrets and guns with good depression angles. And Swedish TDs were unlike anything in the game before. The TD branch became the first branch with a special new game mechanic. This was the so-called siege mode. We had our share of concerns about how these innovations would be perceived by players. Two years later, we can safely affirm that the vehicles became very popular. The Swedish tech tree is one of the best trees regarding player demand. Now it's time to expand it. There are already Swedish medium tanks in the game, but only up to tier 7. After that, it's a heavy tanks branch. At the time of release, there was an idea of expanding the medium tank line to tier 10, and work was done with this in mind. But there were no archive materials and no great gameplay concepts for the top tier tanks at the time. But now, we have a solution. Researching the new branch of the Swedish medium tanks will start at tier 7 with a Leo. Then for tiers 8, 9 and 10, we'll add kind of, well, we, let's just call it a sub-branch. And additionally, the main gameplay features are placed at higher tiers. As you progress, you'll be able to move along the heavy tank branch or research these new medium tanks. Starting from Tier 8, the Swedish medium tanks will all have this gameplay feature. They will be able to adjust their clearance level and change their hull inclination angle, thus giving themselves better gun depression angles. At the first glance, the suspension of the new Swedish medium tanks is very similar to that of the Swedish TDs. But in fact, there are more differences than similarities. Siege mode doesn't give the Swedish medium tanks any other advantages apart from additional hull inclination. However, it's turned on automatically as soon as the speed drops to a certain value. Here is an example. You roll up to the hill and decelerate to start aiming. And when your speed is lower than 10 km per hour, the vehicle switches to this mode and its suspension starts helping you. If you start accelerating and are going faster than 20 km per hour, the vehicle turns off this mode and its hull levels out, and you continue to roll out as a regular medium tank. Keep in mind, the speed at which the Swedish medium tanks enter this mode is different from the speed needed to cancel it. So, what are the advantages of the new suspension? This mechanic will benefit these tanks in unusual situations in-game. The total depression angle can reach 13 to 14 degrees. Let's talk details now and take a closer look at these tanks. The candidates for the branch were selected from the projects of the UDS-14 program. By early 1970s, the Swedes decided they needed a replacement for the British Centurions and homemade STRV-103 tanks. The military came up with the requirements. They wanted a combat vehicle weighing between 20 to 30 tons, with a gun caliber from 105 to 120 millimeters, the ability to ford water obstacles by swimming, and, more importantly, a rotating turret. It appeared that the STRV-103 was lacking. Two companies worked on the project, Bofors and Haglunds. The first vehicle of the new branch is the UDIS-14 at Tier 8. This is a medium tank with quite a traditional design. It has a very good gun. The stock gun is 90 mm, but the top one is 105 mm. Already at Tier 8, players will be able to benefit from the air suspension. The vehicle design will be very similar to the regular medium tanks. I mean, you'll have a turret, and the tank silhouette will be quite high, similar to regular medium tanks. So the only difference in gameplay will be the air suspension feature. At Tier 9, we have a vehicle called the UDIS-16. 
It will only have researchable 105 mm guns. Here we are on the final stretch. This vehicle is very similar to the top one. Of course, their characteristics are slightly weaker, with allowance for its tier. What's interesting, they will have a researchable turret. Here starts the gameplay with the 105mm guns and good depression angles. Players will be able to fully feel all advantages of this vehicle design, its mechanics and gun strengths. But enough about Tier 9, because everyone wants a Tier 10 vehicle. Let's talk more about it. At Tier 10, we have the UDAS 15, the final vehicle in the branch. Beside all the above-mentioned features and the hydro-pneumatic suspension, it also has a well-protected turret, shifted further toward the hull's center. So, the vehicle design is quite convenient. Another vehicle feature is this 120mm gun. Not many medium tanks have such a gun at Tier 10 so the damage per shot will be high. Regarding its use on the battlefield, it will have no equivalence. Because a medium tank's main task is to reach certain positions faster than heavy tanks, and do flank raids and so on and so forth. This Swedish medium tank should be played similarly. But it has excellent gun depression angles that you can use by playing from behind the terrain folds. And the turret is very well armored. So it can even repel hits from other Tier 10 vehicles. By the way, high damage per shot should be a feature of all top tier Swedish medium tanks. There are several more common traits. Surely it's the suspension giving the tank additional gun depression angles the armor with not-so-impressive thickness, but these vehicles are sturdier than they seem. All tanks in the branch will have quite well-armored turrets. In general, you will be able to shrug off shells of medium tanks of the same tier, and of some heavy tanks, but hardly any from tank destroyers. The reasons for this are quite obvious. The whole armor will have decent sloping, but you shouldn't expose it because its armor is not that good. The medium tanks won't have such a high reverse speed as the Swedish TDs. They have the dynamics typical for their class. In general, all these medium tanks won't be as fast as the French vehicles. They are more like Soviet medium tanks. I mean, they are quite mobile, but without any big surprises. The top Swedish medium tanks contain another feature of the National Tank Building School. They are very compact. I think everyone remembers the STRV-103B and its small size, both in terms of length and height. So the Tier 10 Swede will be of similar size. This will be one of the smallest Tier 10 tanks. It will be very low and stealthy and hard to hit. Soon, the new Swedish tanks will be sent to super test for the first iteration of testing. First of all, we need to be sure that the new feature of the Swedish medium tanks will fit into the game well. We plan to test the tier 10 tank first. We'll see how its 120 mm gun performs. If all goes well, we'll go down the branch. If we have any issues with a 125 mm gun, we can just check how the vehicle with the 105 mm gun plays. We can adjust the damage values. At the moment, damage per shot at tier 10 is planned in the range of 440 to 460. It's quite a lot, yeah. This requires a longer gun reload time, and we have concerns it won't fit a medium tank. Since there are no accurate historical prototypes, we will use balance settings for them, and depending on the sum of parameters, we will take decision on the final characteristics. This gives us opportunity to set up both speed and general mobility of the vehicles correctly, as well as their firepower and armor. We hope that these vehicles will be interesting and bring you enjoyable gameplay. Keep an eye out for more details. Share your opinions on the forum and in the comments. Stay tuned and see you on the battlefield.